most vulnerable places for people to become hooked on opioids is after surgery. But I understand that there are some really new cutting edge treatments or options that reduce the dependence on opioids and reduce the pain threshold. So what are some of the things that are coming up in surgery? Well, that's really true. And because of the growing opioid epidemic, um, doctors have been looking for alternatives. So one of the alternatives is called Exparel. Exparel is an injected liposomal, which means fat globule, that contains local anesthetic in it, long-acting local anesthetic. And when the surgeon injects that into the wound, over 24 to 48 hours, these little fat globules open up and the local anesthetic seeps out into the tissue. And it's been shown that some patients can get by without any opioids at all. Wow. So, and is that... Um injection done in addition to general. So then before they close the wound, they give this injection. Exactly. And right. then it keeps them pain-free afterwards. Right. So if right. someone says, say, has a hip replacement, right. and, you know, traditionally you would load those patients up on opioids, um, they found that if you inject Exparel in the wound near where the hip replacement was done, some people can get by with very little opioids. Wow. And is that good for any kind of surgery? For many mm -hmm. types of surgery. It's not good for every single type, like you wouldn't do it for a tonsil. It wouldn't work for yeah, that. Okay. But certain types of joint surgeries, it's very good for knee, uh, shoulder, uh, hip, things like that, and even general surgery, wound closure, things like that. The other thing coming along is intravenous doses of ketamine, which is a kind of an anesthetic in a class by itself. It's been shown that small doses of ketamine given during the surgical procedure can reduce the use of opioids in the after-surgery procedure and even reduce the incidence of pain months down the line. Wow, okay. Yeah. So now, is there anybody, both with ketamine and with Exparel, that should not use these? Is there anyone that's, that's at risk or they haven't tested it? Um, ketamine probably should not be used for people with advanced heart conditions because mm -hmm. it has a tendency to increase the heart rate. Um, also, people with psychiatric conditions, it can exacerbate their psychiatric problems. But other than that, in the doses they're using, it's been shown to be very safe. Okay, so those are, those are real careful. And Exparel, I presume, is relatively safe. Yes, since it's just injecting the fat. studies have shown that okay. it is. And how about antidepressants? Because I understand that using um, Lyrica and other mm -hmm. antidepressants is also something that they're doing that reduces the pain threshold after surgery. Right, and the doses that they're using um, are small enough so that the side effect profile from these drugs is very low. So the, the cost benefit in them, it's worth uh, for many patients taking the small dose of antidepressant to temper the central nervous system not to react to pain the same way. And same thing, anyone that should not like young adults who tend to have a little bit of a reaction sometimes to antidepressants. Right. Well, there's no particular contraindication unless the patient has um, a, shown a problem with the drugs in the past or has some other psychiatric condition that contraindicates the use of these medicines. Okay. Now, how about, this would be my personal favorite pick, mm -hmm. how about the use of music? That there have been studies when patients listen to music that it actually reduces their need for pain medication after surgery. Well, I think that effect is very real, and it comes from the fact that music will cause a natural endorphin release in the central nervous system. And endorphins are kind of like natural opioids that we all have in our body and react to opiate receptors. So I think that's a very real effect. So can somebody, A, talk to their anesthesiologist before they go into surgery and say, can I listen to music? And then secondly, is the anesthesiologist monitoring pain in any way through the surgery so that they know that the music's working. Again, I'm all about what can I do that avoids the drugs? Well, yeah, the anesthesiologist is monitoring pain uh, as regard to vital signs. One indicator mm -hmm. of pain in surgery is whether the heart rate goes up or the blood pressure grows up, or if the patient's breathing on his or her own, the respirations go up. So these are all indicators that the patient is having pain. So the anesthesiologist reacts by giving usually more opioid medication mm -hmm. or more mm -hmm. anesthetic gas. Now, I don't know if the studies have been done whether uh, patients are listening to music during their surgery or not are conscious of it, but I know that listening before surgery can be mm -hmm. beneficial. I'll bet it is when they're unconscious too. They just <laughs> haven't studied it yet. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Those great insights. Thank you, David. Okay. If you like what you just saw, do me a favor, share it. The healthcare challenge is really a problem for all of us. And the more we can get this information out and get people taking better care of their health, the healthier we will all be.
We have more videos with Dr. Shear as well as his blog, What Your Doctor Isn't Telling You, at our website, bottomlineinc.com.